Hey, you all, and good morning. Carpetbagger here, coming to you live from Route 66. Here, we're back in Joplin, Missouri. I left Boogie's house this morning, and we're resuming our Route 66 trip. We are back on the Mother Road. I don't think we're gonna have any other ventures off of the Mother Road um, in the upcoming days and weeks. I think we're gonna head pretty much follow the mother road to Santa Monica, but no guarantees. We could end up doing a detour. Um, I didn't know this existed. This is the Route 66 Carousel Park, and it looks kind of like a permanent uh, carnival here on the side of the road. You can see the carousel right there. And these kind of look like the uh, aliens from uh, Toy Story, right? But look what we have here in the middle. This is a dark ride. And uh, man, I would love to check this out. I love trying to ride every dark ride in America. I didn't know about this one. Again, this is, looks like a traveling style dark ride, but it is here permanently, I believe. You can see there's some sort of witch or ghost on the top. Some of that great carnival artwork. You can even spot Scooby-Doo and the gang peeking out the window there. Definitely gonna have to come back to Joplin sometime and ride this dark ride. Here we are at the State Line Hogs and Hot Rod Saloon. Actually, here at the Kansas State Line, the Kansas Missouri State Line. Now, Kansas is part of Route 66, but uh, Route 66 only goes through Kansas for 13 miles. And here is the State Line. We could put one foot in Kansas, one foot in Missouri, and then look both ways and cross Route 66 with one foot in each state here. So yeah, finally, finally, another state besides Missouri. You can see the dump truck with eyes there, reminiscent of the Cars movie, although I don't know if there was actually a dump truck in uh, the car movies. Stopped off here at Luigi's Pit Stop. You can see the car coming out of the wall here. Now it's my understanding that uh, here in Kansas, they, they do celebrate the Cars movie uh, quite a bit. There is some uh, connections between the Cars movie and the Kansas section of uh, Route 66. Looks like this car here is wearing headphones. I'm not sure why he would be wearing headphones if he's going to the shooting range or something like that. Yeah, they have a little picnic area in here. See the Galena, Kansas mural. The family here going on a road trip. See the dog sticking its head at the windows. The kids making faces at other cars. And here's our end destination, Pacific Park on Santa Monica Pier. Oh, we have the, let's all go to the lobby and get ourselves a treat. See the different uh, food characters. Hot dog man, fudge sickle, pickle with a mustache. Some photo ops here. Then, a map that looks like everyone has been autographing it. Of course, we are right here currently. We're starting to make a little distance, finally. There's Illinois, Missouri, Kansas, heading into Oklahoma shortly, and then through these states. This one has another hole right here for my hand. What am I supposed to be doing with my hand? Doing like a little wave. Now here's the sheriff car from Cars. And according to this plaque right here, it's actually signed by the voice actor, Michael Wallace. So if you look over there on top, of that door, you can see the signature 
of Michael Wallace, the actor that played the sheriff in Cars. And if you look back here behind the building, we have a terrified version of Lightning McQueen. Looks <laughs> horrified there. And I guess he's gone cow tipping. I guess in the cow's world, these tractors are cows and they tip them up on their backs where they get stuck. Is that right? What do you do? You honk the horn? You honk the horn and then the cows flip over? Is that how cow tipping works? So yes, Route 66 in Kansas does heavily lean on the Cars movie and there is a reason for that. You can see this is a Cars themed gas station here called Cars on the Route. And it's here at Cars on the Route where they have the original tow mater. Now this rusty tow truck was uh, scouted by the animators that created the Disney movie Cars and they used it as the basis for the character Mater in the movie. This very truck right here. Now they've added a, an additional Mater here that uh, looks a little bit more like he did in the movie. You can see the buck teeth and the way he looks. But yeah, this is uh, the inspiration, the original Tow Mater, if you will. We also have a uh, fire truck character there. They're actually getting ready to open the store in a few weeks, beginning of April, getting it all ready for this season. A little dining area here. Hey, so this is the glove box cover of the car. Signed by the voice actor, Larry the Cable Guy. Now I'm not sure what character this is from Cars. I don't, I don't recognize that one. If you know what character this is, leave a comment in the comment section. So they call this bridge up here the Rainbow Bridge, I guess because it's shaped like a rainbow? That would be my guess at least. We have a little Route 66 Tin Man there. We have a Route 66 Antique Shop over here. Quite a collection of sodas in here. We have these Route 66 sodas, as well as some other different brands, including Marilyn Monroe Wild Cherry and Dang Italian Soda. We also have some less traditional sodas like Pimple Pop. Ugh. We have Roddy Piper All Out of Bubblegum Soda. We have a huge collection of different root beers. They even have this uh, Triple X root beer. Actually, they make this in uh, Indiana. There's a diner called Triple X Diner that's famous for making this root beer. Wait a minute. Judge Wapner root beer? I sentence you to drink my root beer? Look at this. For change, they gave me a $2 bill. It's been a very long time since I've seen one of these. At the back, they're signing the Declaration of Independence on the back. Look at that. So I, I, I couldn't, I had trouble deciding, but I went with the Kickapoo juice because it has a funny name. Has anyone heard? I don't know this backstory. I don't know what, if this is a local soda somewhere. We have Kickapoo juice. It's a authentic top. It doesn't twist off. I do have, fortunately, I do have uh, on my keychain a way to open that. So let's try the Kickapoo. Kickapoo, Kickapoo Joy juice is what it's called. Reminds me of that uh, Tenacious D song, Kickapoo. Is Kickapoo in Michigan? Hmm. I'll try it again. Now it's expecting like a Mountain Dew flavor. It's got sourness to it. It's got almost maybe like a grapefruit in it.
kind of like a, but also like a spritey taste to it too. But uh, yeah, kind of a spritey, with maybe a little bit of, maybe spray with a little bit of grapefruit in it. It's another antique called the Baxter Flea Market. There's this really cool clown mailbox out front. Unfortunately, they're closed. They actually close at two o'clock, which I'm pretty sad because I wanted to buy some baby chicks. Do you got a kick out of these old school soda machines? Love the big, big old buttons. Okay, that sign over there says leaving Kansas. Come again. Oh, and that sign says welcome to Oklahoma. So yeah, Kansas, very short. Route 66 experience in Kansas, but we are now in the great state of Oklahoma. We are in Miami, Miami, Oklahoma, that is, and I've stopped off here at the Cuckoo. This is a uh, old school 66 diner. It's actually stopped here last time I was on Route 66. And look at this, I still have this on my keychain. Last time I was here at the Cuckoo in Miami, Oklahoma, I bought this keychain. It's one of the only things that's on my keychain right now, but still have that uh, on the old keys. From the Cuckoo. A really cool building here as well. Actually shaped like a cuckoo clock. You could see the cuckoo bird popping out of the top. Now I was gonna go in and get something, but uh, the lobby is actually closed. But uh, they do have a drive-thru. I think we're gonna head through the drive-thru and get something to eat. It's like they have Reuben and Rye as a special. So we drive here up to the window. A little cuckoo bird right there. Okay, a Reuben and a medium pink lemonade. Yes. Thank you. All right, pulling up. Hello there, Cuckoo Bird. I just noticed there's two completely separate drive-throughs, one on each side of the building. I'm not sure the reason for that, but that's pretty interesting. The uh, Cuckoo Cup there. Bit of pink lemonade. And I ordered a Reuben. I'm gonna make this Reuben here. Oh, there we go. Oh, that looks good. Look at that meat there. That looks tasty. This is different. It almost looks like a piece of steak on here. Interesting. I'll give this a bite. Mmm. It's so good, but I've never... Look at that Reuben, how thick the meat is. It's like a piece of meat. Mmm. Very good. Alright, time to fill up the car. We have uh, $3.79 a gallon out here in Oklahoma. And that leads us to a grand total of $49 on about 13 gallons of gas. This absolutely massive Native American statue here. Now this is not a muffler man. This is a, uh, I think a unique creation. We've stopped off here in Foyle, Oklahoma at what is known as Ed Galloway's Totem Pole Park. This is a, uh, Folk art environment created in between the 1930s and the 1960s 
as an homage to Native Americans. There's very interesting sculptures here. You see this owl. And this here, I guess this looks like a giant arrowhead. I actually heard that weather vane on the top just squeak. There you go. See the different faces there on the arrowhead. This tree here, very interesting. See the different animals there on the trunks. Some animals peeking out of holes in the tree. Some portraits here on the lower part of the tree. See some sort of fish there, possibly a delicious bass. This little guy right here, looks like a bird with a human face. See these totems here, a lot of birds and owls incorporated into the totems here. There's the largest of the totems here. Very fascinating structure. And this big face right here is eating some sort of lizard. It's various Native American portraits there on the side. Look up the side of the pole. That looks like a lobster right there. I don't know, maybe it's a crayfish. Looks like you could actually go in this building at one point. See the date, 1948 here. I love the vivid colors of the totem. It's that face right there. It looks like it has a, is that supposed to be like smoking a cigarette right there? That is interesting. See all the different feet. Just look way up to the top there. You see here at the bottom, it's actually a big turtle making the base of this totem. I didn't notice that at first, but um, and correct me if I'm wrong. I, 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 I'm thinking, I don't want to be mis misquote anything here, but I believe in some tribal beliefs. Don't they believe, or in the traditional beliefs, believe that the, the earth was on the back of a turtle? See the, the big turtle head there. See the owl sitting on the turtle's back there. And just look up. It's that big face there. It's got a snake coming out of the mouth. This is very, very impressive. Interesting designs. You can see the faces right there. Over here we have a little house. Apparently it's called the Fiddle House. It is the, I guess, the workshop of Ed Galloway. A little table there. All the seats look to be little totems, little birds, other creatures. You can see the, oh, look at this, it's interesting. He's got his tongue sticking out and there's a fish biting onto the tongue. That's kind of creative. Looking at the detail here. Little owl, squirrel there. So I guess this would serve as a gift shop and museum normally, but uh, looks like it is currently closed. It says open on that sign, but I think someone just forgot to flip it around. We can take a peek in there and see. Oh yeah, you kind of see the inside of the building. It's pretty interesting. There are some totems on the back wall. And it says welcome, come back, and good luck. This is a really cool table here. Oh, look at these chairs. You got these fish and owls on the chairs. And we have arrived in Catoosa, Oklahoma, one of the most iconic sites here on Route 66, the Blue Whale of Catoosa. See, this whale was originally constructed as part of a swimming hole. This was uh, where people used to go swimming. The whale was created as a dock that people could jump off of or slide into the water. You can actually see a water slide there. But the water is no longer really uh, swim friendly. You can see, uh, that, you know, we would probably get out and swim in there, but I think a lot of people would probably uh, choose not to. But uh, yeah, this amazing whale still out here 
on Route 66 and in one of its most iconic spots. We can actually head inside the whale. It actually looks like the whale's got a fishing pole right here in front of it. I don't know if the whale has been caught on the fishing pole. You can walk here into the whale's gullet. You can see these slides on the inside. You can just slide right into the lake there. Walk out onto the, the tail. You can see these ladders would be used for climbing in and out. And then you can walk up and stand on the tail of the whale right here. Actually, let's just just go ahead and climb up this ladder. It's at the back of the whale. I guess you could jump off the back of the whale from up here. You can see the whale's smile here from the inside. Love the teeth, the tongue there. A little bathroom hut over here. You can see the whale there in front of the men's room. Now I think this is the first time I've ever seen the bathroom open here. Yeah, here is the bathroom of the blue whale of Catusa. So the whale was actually recently purchased by the city of Catusa. This used to be a uh, private organization that owned the whale, but the city has purchased it. So now this is actually just a city park here along Route 66. You can come sit at these picnic tables, have a picnic, and enjoy the blue whale. Now the swimming hole and the blue whale used to be part of a roadside zoo out here. And there actually is some ruins of the zoo. It's actually a replica of Noah's Ark that was used in the zoo that we could see here. If you actually look over here, you can see the gate or door people would use to enter the ark. And over here is part of the old cage structure of the zoo. Look in there, we can see some of what would have been the habitat here in the zoo. And then this unusual circle of mushrooms would also be part of the zoo here. Stopped off in Tulsa at the SageNet Center. This is the expo center here in Tulsa. And wanted to visit the big gold driller. One of the tallest statues in all of America. Yes, we've seen muffler men, we've seen the Gemini giant, we've seen Paul Bunyans, but it is believed that the, the gold driller here is the tallest of them all. So he's actually resting his hand on an oil pump, on an oil rig, and uh, they do change his shirt every so often. His shirt says Durabraid, I don't know what that is, some sort of He's advertising something here, the, the Durabraid band, but look at him. Look at that big expressionless face that he has. Just look at this shoe, this boot. Look how big it is. I hardly come up to his ankle. You can see as we stare crotchward how freaking tall he is.
This is actually newly restored. I remember last time I came by, all this parking lot was gone and they were putting in a new parking area. And he looks as good as ever. And of course here in Tulsa, we gotta stop by and say hello to Buck Adam, the space cowboy there holding his rocket. It's one of the legendary muffler men here on Route 66. Actually a newer addition to Route 66. It's designed by Mark Klein. Definitely love his look there. Unfortunately, the shop itself, Buck Adams Cosmic Curios, is closed for the evening. And I just noticed this in the window. They have the gold driller bobblehead. I, I need to get that to add to uh, my collection. I need to swing by, back by here when it's open at some point and get a gold driller bobblehead. I have the Buck Adams bobblehead, but not the golden driller. Peeking inside the window, you can see the little robot creations that they sell here. This is a lily put right here, part of the project. Uh, robots on 66. You can see the plaque there. First post-World War II era tin toy robot exported from American occupied Japan here at Buck Adams Cosmic Curios. Uh, I think there's only so far, there, there, I think the plan is to put robots all along Route 66. I think right now there are only two. There's this one here and then one in Oklahoma City. And we will maybe try to find that one uh, when we get to Oklahoma City. And next door to Buck, we have Decopolis, Decopolis Discovatorium, which is an amazing name. Unfortunately, they're not open either, but they do have these dinosaurs out front. That's what's great about Route 66. Get to just see random dinosaurs and robots hanging out alongside the road. I think for dinner we'll try some Mexican food here at Rancho Grande. the carne asada here okay, with a side of corn and beans. All right, got some skirt steak there. Mm. Mm. Very good. A little bit of corn. And beans there as well. Mm. Very good. And we have attained Clean Play Club. So thank you for joining me here as we return to our trip on Route 66 and continue to head towards Santa Monica, California. We have conquered a few states now. We got Illinois down, we got Missouri down, we got Kansas down, that was easy. And we are now in Oklahoma. So from there we hit Texas. New Mexico, Arizona, and then finally in to California. Hope you guys stay with me until the end. Maybe even longer than that. That would be great, actually. And it would also be great if you guys subscribe to let you know when new videos are released. And it helps me out. Uh, if you'd like to find other ways to help the channel, consider donating to Patreon. $3 or more will get you a postcard once a month from me to you. Also selling enamel pins in the Etsy shop. All that information is in the description. And all that helps keep this car on the mother road, this boat in the water, and this dirigible in the air. Until tomorrow morning, my friends, this one's in the bag. <laughs>